Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Monday, March the 4th, 2024. To start with, I suppose I want to talk about my background. Um, I do understand this background isn't great. Uh, a couple of people in the comments had described it as being mustard, this mustard background. Um, I do want to get rid of it. And so yesterday I did a video somewhere else um, and there was a better background. Uh, the reason I was somewhere else over the weekend was uh, it was... Um, uh, it was because of a dog. A dog gets separation anxiety. And if I'm not pretty close to the dog uh, when she's potentially awake, uh, you know, she get yeah, she can get really mad and start barking her head off. So I thought I had to be as close as to the dog as possible. Um, so I've gone back to the mustard background, uh, but uh, I am going to change the background. I do understand that the mustard background has to go. So yeah, I do read the comments. Um, I do get that. As far as my topic for uh, today is concerned, it relates to a man called Kevin Monaghan, who has just been sentenced to 25 years in prison for uh, second degree murder. So there was this tragic story um, about uh, some People, some teenagers, young people, um, they were looking for a party in, in upstate New York, uh, I think last year in April. Uh, and they went in, they went down into a long, they went down a, someone's driveway, wrong, wrong driveway, looking for this party. And this man, uh, Kevin Monaghan, um, got upset about it. And he's, and, and as they were leaving, um, he fired off um, a shotgun and as a result someone got killed um, a 20 year old woman called Kaylin Gillis and uh, so he, he was arrested and he went through the system and yes on Friday he was sentenced to 25 years in prison and uh, he's, he's 66 years old uh, I thought it'd be interesting to look at his chart um, and also look at the chart of his victim because you know these two people have nothing to do with each other they don't know each other but they come together for um, a tragic few minutes and so he kills someone he doesn't even know who's not doing uh, okay driving up his uh, going up his driveway but you know uh, looking for a, looking for a party that's that's their single encounter so I thought I'd compare those two charts also consider um, you know, what was going on when that happened. I think that was on April the 15th, 2023, at um, around 9.45, maybe a bit after in the evening. And uh, yes, there is the personality of Kevin Monaghan. Uh, so he's, yeah, he was, he's 66, uh, born in October 1957. Um, described as uh, dyspeptic, someone who's just irritated, uh, who um, seems to be really into his privacy, apparently was sick of people mistakenly going up his driveway. Um, one article accused, said described how he barked at dogs because he was annoyed at them. Um, and uh, I was I tried to work out what was going on in on, I tried to look at Reddit. There was a, there's a, apparently there's a whole there's a, actually there's a whole Reddit um, uh, does, uh, focusing on um, criticizing baby boomers. And he be, was an example of a baby boomer. Uh, I suppose I'm a baby boomer. So if you're to be a baby boomer, you have to be born, I think, between 1946 and maybe sometime in the early 60s, 62, 63, 64. So I am um, born in 62. I'm a late baby, late baby boomer. And he, he, you know, this Reddit article or Reddit post was suggesting that he's just typical of the, of the baby boomer um, generation and uh he deserved what he got i think um that's what that's a suggestion there so i mean that is an extreme thing to say um um and i, I understand there are some baby boomers watching it. it's not just me who's a baby boomer um so what is it about him and his generation uh that might do something like this i suspect nothing 
Um, but um, I still want to consider that. I suppose it has something to do with the fact that he's got Pluto in Virgo. So Pluto in Virgo would characterize, I suppose, sort of some of the late baby boomers. I, I, I'm my Pluto is at seven seven thirty three Virgo. His his Pluto is at one something Virgo. Uh, yeah, so. That's my topic. I just want to consider um, Kevin Monaghan, the shooting, um, Kaylin Gillis, um, the woman he killed, and he, yes, I suppose the sentencing, because he was sentenced to 25 years in prison um, last Friday. But uh, before I do that, I want to look at the astrology and the I Ching for today, which is Monday, March the 4th, uh, 2020. Four. Okay, so that's the chart for today. Uh, uh, set for Monday, March the fourth, twenty twenty-four, noon uh, in New York. Uh, uh, no particular reason why it has to be in New York. Uh, so this moon you will see at noon in New York was at twenty-seven something Sagittarius. Uh, the moon does go into Capricorn today. Uh, it goes into Capricorn London time at 9.15 p.m. Uh, you know, that means it's pretty late that moon go goes into Capricorn if you're in Europe. Uh, you know, that would be 10.15 p.m. in Paris or 11.15 p.m. in Kiev, Kiev or I think Athens. Uh, is Athens. I think Athens is two hours um, ahead of London, off the top of my head. Um, you know, if you're in Asia, Australia, New Zealand, Moon goes into Capricorn tomorrow. If you're in the Americas, on the other hand, then Moon will go into Capricorn at quarter past four um, on Monday afternoon, this afternoon in New York, and at quarter past one in the afternoon, just after lunch, around lunchtime, if you're in Los Angeles, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, uh, etc. Uh, in other words, the Pacific Coast. Uh, so yes, so the Americas, you will see, uh, or potentially will see, a bit of a change um, over, the, over the course of the afternoon, um, with uh, the moon moving into, moving f out of a sparkling Sagittarius out of a fire sign into a sort of more down to earth um, Capricorn. So things might sort of settle down, but if you're in Americas, you might feel that as one thing comes to an end, uh, something else starts. Uh, so, yes, so in the Americas, it may be a day of two halves. Uh, yes, but for everyone else, the moon is in Sagittarius pretty much all day. I don't know if, if you're in. If you're in the UK, then I suppose you could last a couple of hours of a day. I don't know what you're doing late this evening. Um, maybe you can focus on some moon in Capricorn kind of stuff, uh, doing something serious, um, uh, getting something organized um, if, if, you, if you want. Uh, so that is a, that is, um, a possibility. Um, the moon, just before it moves into Capricorn, uh, makes a sextile to Venus. So there's the moon sextile Venus. Um, that is, by and large, uh, a fairly fortunate aspect. It is about getting on with people, um, knowing how to behave. Um, and also, I think, being quite exciting. I mean, this is the, the moon sextile Venus is the last major aspect the moon makes um, with a traditional planet uh, before it leaves the sign. Uh, and so, you know, get, yeah, that, yeah, that is about um, being, being exciting, but also being sociable. Um, so it's maybe like a last chance to talk to someone, meet someone, have some excitement. Um, and yeah, if you need to get on with people, I think that moon sextile Venus um, uh, could be useful. Yet the last uh, major aspect in general uh, that the moon makes with any form of 
plan major planet is the moon sextile Neptune. So you know there is moon moon in Sagittarius. So the moon moon square Neptune may have may affect us today a little. Uh, moon sextile moon square Neptune can be a little bit confused. Um, it can be quite idealistic as well, especially as the moon is fairly close to the galactic center. Well, it will be ro rolling over the galactic center. The galactic center is a sort of a point in the, in the sky, kind of rather like a fixed star, which is the supposed f center of the galaxy. Uh, the, the galactic center is fairly cosmic. Um, we can perhaps turn our attention to wider cosmic, spiritual, universal matters, especially as uh, the moon is square Neptune. Um, so there may be a time today when we start thinking about things that are just beyond ourselves, just before the moon moves into Capricorn. So that would, would be perhaps... Uh, if you're in the Americas, sort of in the morning, early afternoon. Uh, if you're in, um, uh, if you're in Europe, Australia, uh, Asia, then you might get that sort of all day. Just a, just a feeling as the day progresses that you're starting to think about things that are um, beyond your sort of immediate environment, and that is intensified by the fact that there is a major aspect today. Uh, in the sense that two outer planets are connected, uh, Jupiter is semi-square Neptune. Now, you could say, oh, semi-square is a minor aspect. Well, I wouldn't have said the semi semi-square is really a minor aspect, um, when, particularly when it's exact. So Jupiter, semi-square Neptune. Uh, Jupiter is about our ideals. Uh, it's about where we want to go. We're not satisfied with where we are right here. We, right here, we want to go somewhere beyond. Uh, when it's semi-square Neptune, um, we want to really move out. We want to perhaps uh, loosen the boundaries around us, move on to something else. But with Jupiter semi-square Neptune, there can be a sense of unrealistic fantasy, uh, getting into a belief, um, an idea um could be a religion um or could be an ideology uh, just wanting to abandon ourselves to a wider belief system that is a possibility uh, i would warn you about getting excited uh, or heavily motivated about something that is not particularly relevant to your own immediate sphere of influence um because there is a sense of delusion about Jupiter square Neptune, semi square Neptune, um, believing things are possible that just cannot happen, and in terms of your own immediate reality and what you're trying to achieve, some of us, when we look at what we might, what we can do, and we might think that things are possible, when in fact, of course there's a good chance that they are completely impossible and we do have to be careful there with this with this jupiter semi square neptune also at the same time venus is decile neptune so venus is 36 degrees from neptune uh, away from neptune um decile's more about style of what we're trying to create um venus can be about relationships uh we may almost deliberately want to kid ourselves about a relationship that is a possibility uh it seems to be the good thing to a good thing to do to have fantasies about relationships to think that you and someone else or you and a group of people can move in a particular direction and can have particular experiences when in fact it might be uh impossible uh, so, yeah, uh, be careful there. And I should say that uh, you know, Jupiter square, Jupiter square Neptune, um, sorry, Jupiter semi square Neptune is a an aspect about eightness because a semi square is um, 
an eighth of the circle. Um, the Venus and Neptune, a decal, that's an aspect about 10. It's about 10-ness. So we have to think, what is a number that both eights and tens go into? Um, well, the answer is 40. Uh, if we want, if we're just interested, if we're, but, we're, but if we're prepared to have um, a chart where we can see Jupiter, Venus and Neptune all together, we don't need to use the 40th harmonic, we can, we can use the 20th harmonic. So this is the position of a planet. So these are regular positions of a planet. So what I'm going to show you now is a, is a 20th harmonic. That's when we take the absolute longitude of every single planet and multiply it by 20 um, and to give us a 20th harmonic. So this is a 20th harmonic chart. And so I said that Jupiter is semi-square Neptune and Venus is decal Neptune. So using the 20th harmonic we can see that Jupiter is opposition, a Venus-Neptune conjunction. Remember, there's not a Venus-Neptune conjunction, really, it, 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 but, it, but it exists on this special chart, the 20th harmonic. So we can bring Jupiter, Neptune, and Venus together in the same chart. So Jupiter is opposition, Venus, Venus and Neptune, on the 20th harmonic. Um, so Venus and Neptune is about the... the trying to create this fantastic style um, in terms of how we relate to other people and Jupiter is opposition to that. So there can be something a little bit indulgent about that. Um, Jupiter opposition, Venus, Neptune on the 20th harmonic um, going, uh, going a little over the top and that might have a financial aspect as well. Um, Venus can relate to money. Um, so there is this underlying fantasy today um, this underlying sense in which uh, some of us are being unrealistic. And we almost know we're being unrealistic. We know we're chasing a fantasy, but we still do it. We feel almost that it's the right thing to do. Um, maybe this also relates to the question of ideology. Um, um, perhaps trying to bring other people together into our ideology. Or we find that other people are trying to bring us into their ideology. And uh, there could be pressure on us to believe in what other people believe. And uh, we, could, we could be about conf be a little bit conflicted, perhaps if we're talking about, you know, big issues of the day um, that we get, uh, yeah, we, where people say, yeah, you've got to, got to be concerned about this. If you're not concerned about this, you don't have any passion. You don't, sorry, you don't have, have any compassion. Uh, so, yeah, we, I think um, that, uh, that requires a little bit of um, caution. So how do, we, um, how do we stay friends with people if they believe in something that we are not wildly enthusiastic about? Another aspect today, I'll go back to the regular chart, uh, is uh, a sextile between Mercury and Uranus. Uh, there's Mercury at uh, 1925 Pisces. Uh, there's Uranus, uh, 1941 Taurus at noon in New York. So Mercury sextile Uranus is quite um, an exciting aspect. Uh, it's about ideas. Um, but because Mercury is in Pisces, these ideas possibly are not going to come through like flashes of inspiration. Um, it's more that the ideas are going to sort of develop slowly. We ponder on it. Um, we think about something. We think about how to change something and we ponder on it. And suddenly, the, you know, it's the, our, our feeling of excitement is slow. And then all of a sudden it makes sense and then we want to communicate it. Mercury is a planet of communication. It's in a, um, and we want to spread the word. And that may be how Mercury, how Mercury sextile Uranus um, works. It's a slow realization that we want something to change. And it's a slow realization also that we can actually make something change. And uh, I think it kind of fits in with, the Jupiter square Neptune, so the Jupiter semi-square Neptune. Yeah, 
Jupiter semi-square Neptune, it is so easy to have um, unrealistic fantasies. But perhaps Mercury sextile Neptune, Mercury sextile Uranus, uh, gives us a realization that at some level, some of our fantasies can be turned into reality, provided uh, we go about it in the right way. I now want to consider today's uh, planetary picture from the perspective of the 12 signs. I, I would have said that it's not a particularly busy day. Uh, there's not a great deal of action. Uh, so it may be that some of my interpretations um, are are fairly brief. I mean, I don't want to just talk about stuff um, just for the sake of it. Anyway, these are my forecasts for today, which is for the 12 signs, today being Monday, March the 4th, 2024. Aries, you have some big ideas today, Aries. I mean, I think, Aries, you've had some big ideas for some time. Uh, perhaps they've been brewing over the weekend. And you really can see that things can be different. And you, you want to kind of put things into action, like, um, as soon as possible. But, Aries, I think it's important that you're not too hasty. Uh, you know, there is a danger that you sort of get... Um, overexcited and you act too soon um, you know maybe you need to change some of your um, time scales do you do you really need to achieve everything today um, it may be that uh, if you're looking for sort of concrete results and looking to do something that is real and can stand the test of time that you have to wait a little longer um, you know, okay, in the, in the uh, Americas, you know, if you've got if you've got some plans, it might be better to wait until later in the day, uh, so, uh, late afternoon. Um, I know late afternoon is not is often a day when, a time when people are slowing down, but you know the moon will be in Capricorn, and that will allow you to. Um, have a better understanding of what can be done and what can't be done. If you're not in America in, in America in the Americas, then really you should be consider you should consider postponing things until tomorrow. At least not postponing things absolutely, but cons but postponing the important stuff. Yeah, today you can you can think about what you want to do. Uh, you can uh, explore uh, various ideas you've got, but without feeling that uh, you really need to actually put anything into action. But it could be difficult um, because, Aries, I think you may have this sense of excitement um, that you, you, know, you really want something to happen. And it may be that uh, you feel that you finally understood how to unblock something something that had been holding you up, um, preventing you from doing what you all the stuff you wanted to do, you may feel um, that at least conceptually you have understood what now needs to be done. In one sense, you feel a great sense of relief. Finally got it. Finally know what to do. So in another sense, you want to actually go and do it. But maybe you should separate other two actions Okay, you understand what needs to be done, um, but is now really the right time to do it? Um, just perhaps work on it for um, a little bit longer. Um, so that is probably my advice. Um, still, there's no be no denying that uh, if you have any sense of the spiritual, um, any sense of things that are beyond you, uh, then today is going to be quite powerful. Um, you can see beyond your um, immediate environment. You're, you can see beyond the material. 
you do have um, a sense of the cosmic. After all, the moon is on the galactic center and uh, you, you know that there is, uh, there is life um, beyond the immediate and the material and you can see that higher vision. And yeah, I think get into that. Um, it's, it's, that's, um, that is something um, entirely fortunate. And you may feel that you're sort of growing as a person and you're just seeing um, more and more. Um, now, one area of your life that may be a little problematic uh, is uh, is relationships, close relationships. I don't think you are entirely uh, in the mood for getting really close to people. I think you can get close to people um, on an an intellectual level and on a philosophical level, uh, in being with people who are on your wavelength. Um, talking about things that, that, are, that have where there's a common interest, um, but getting really close to people, I'm, I'm not sure that that is necessarily desirable. Um, I, I think it could uh, it could distract you. Uh, it could um, waste some of your time, and also some people they may be. Um, they may be friendly at, on a superficial level, but deep down, uh, you may see a real sense of tension being expressed, uh, and you can pick up on that tension. And and the closer you get to someone, the more and more you can feel that tension. And maybe that is um, not something um, you want to be part of. So in terms of relationships, I would have said uh, the basic message is um, just keep it light. Taurus, the moon is in the process of changing sign. Uh, and from a Taurian perspective, I think that is a good thing. Um, for one thing, um, the moon has been in a part of your chart that, yeah, that has been quite focused on on yourself uh, and on your your particular way of feeling about the world, and so that has made you feel a sort of um, a bit uncomfortable and a bit separated from the from the outside world. Uh, but you know, as the moon has moved, as the moon moves through late Sagittarius, because the moon is mo now moving in through late Sagittarius, um, it does make a sextile aspect to Venus, and of course, Venus is your uh, ruling planet. So even before the moon moves into Capricorn, um you're you're starting to feel uh feel better and you're better able to engage your feelings in an interpersonal way uh, i think you're finding that you can um understand people um and you know you know what to say and what not to say and you know that that is making it easier for you to um, be out there in the world and uh, going to new places, being with new people. Um, and in terms of pursuing your aims, you know, whatever those aims might be, um, those aims might relate to your um, uh, your career, they might aim to be about business, they may be about just how you want to be in society. So whatever you're doing in society, uh, how you want to um, present yourself, it's just becoming uh, increasingly easy and you can present yourself in a way that is, um, that is really effective um, and reassuring and it also shows... Uh, a certain amount of um, sensitivity, and so I, you know, I think that that is um, 
that's that's pretty fortunate so i you know i would encourage you to be be out there um today um because you know you you can make um you can make a good impression another thing going on today is that um jupiter while moving through uh taurus which is your which is your sign um is semi square neptune um now jupiter is in taurus uh, it's been in your sign for a for a, for a long time um months and months uh when did jupiter so i should tell you when did jupiter go into taurus i should tell you uh i sort of i should know off the top of my head but jupiter went into taurus um how long has it been now yeah jupiter went into taurus it actually may of yeah in may of last year so since may of last year jupiter has been in your been in taurus and it's been a time when uh taurians have been um thinking about uh how they can make their life um more meaningful more interesting how you can expand outwards into sort of new horizons um how you can make more of everything and jupiter is making a making the semi square to neptune um so you you may be particularly motivated to think about the world out there um maybe in a in a religious sense or a spiritual sense it could be a political sense some cause maybe has is grabbing your attention um it it seems uh it seems not just exciting but meaningful but i talked about jupiter semi square neptune at the beginning of this um video and um i made a i wa- i made a warning with jupiter semi square neptune um you can start chasing things which have no hope of being realized um now i i don't want to you know i don't want to sound negative about it um your your dreams can be fulfilled the things you've been working on it it can happen but some of your ideas today uh may not be realistic uh, so consider what you are trying to achieve and don't be in a hurry um you know instead focus on the fact that not that jupiter that neptune is semi square jupiter but focus on perhaps on the fact that mercury is sextile uranus uranus is also moving through taurus and that's another planet that's been planet that's been moving into through your sign for a long time um there is inspiration there's good inspiration there's inspiration that you can actually act on it's out there uh but you have to you have to work on it uh you can't just have a fantasy you perhaps have to listen to what other people are say, saying maybe you have to read a book maybe you just have to listen to the vibes <laughs> what's going on around you and just be patient um just just don't um rush into anything gemini mercury is your ruling planet and mercury is making a sextile aspect to uranus um i think that this this sextile aspect is entirely fortunate um you know mercury is in pisces uh okay so in one sense pisces mercury is not so well placed in pisces um because it can get it can get confused um it's perhaps a place that's too emotional for mercury's liking um but i think that the sextile between mercury and neptune sorry mercury and uranus uh could present a moment of clarity for you uh yes there's a lot of stuff to worry about there's a lot of other people and their sensibilities and uh it's all a bit confusing then suddenly you 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 make a connection uh you see things uh for really what they are and that inspiration may come from 
a very deep and profound place within your soul or perhaps you're picking up on something going on in um, the wider collective and you will have a fundamental understanding of um, what needs to be done and how you can actually put your plans into action. Um, now, that doesn't mean to say that you have to do stuff straight away. Um, in fact, I don't think that's desirable. Um, but I think you can you can start to get a, a realization um, of what what needs to what needs to be done. Uh, and you know, there is a, a sense of real excitement there. Um, now, as far as other people are concerned, uh, the moon is moving through the very last degrees of Sagittarius, and uh, Sagittarius is your opposite sign. Um, so this means um, there are still people to deal with uh, that can't be avoided, and I don't think they should be avoided. After all, um, the moon, while moving through Sagittarius, is making a sextile aspect to Venus. Um, so you can form and maintain good contacts with certain people and there's again there is still a sense there is a sense of excitement a feeling that uh, you know certain people really do have something to offer you uh, in terms of giving you uh, a new way of looking at the world um, but when you're listening to people and you're listening to their ideas um, don't don't take what they say at face value. Don't believe everything they say. Uh, it needs to. It needs to go through a bit of filter. A bit of filtering there. Is this? Are, is? Is it really possible what you're hearing? Um, because today there is a sense of a fantasy. Uh, for everyone, it's not just Gemini. Um, but, it's not, in fact, with you, it's not that you have a sense of fantasy. It's not that you are being unrealistic. It's a, it's a sense that some of the people around you are being unrealistic and their lack of realism could have an impact on you. And so that means, Gemini, that when you listen to what people are saying, um, you need to ask yourself, does that, does that sound right? Does it add up? Um, consider the possibility that certain people are, uh, are deluding themselves. And with Mercury sextile Uranus, do not be afraid of speaking your mind. You know, Mercury is a communication planet. Sextile Uranus um, is about... Sudden and dramatic communications, okay, but Mercury's in Pisces, Uranus is in Taurus. That sort of slows it down a bit. You don't have to be overly dramatic, um, but when the time comes to ask questions um, and to make uh, make key interventions and comments, you'll know when the time arrives. You'll know when the time has arrived, and you'll be able to. Um, get people to uh, think again about um, what they're saying because yes there is um, uh, a certain sense sense of fantasy there a bit of fantasy is fine but uh, too much fantasy should um, definitely be avoided cancer you're feeling that uh, things are uh, changing um, that uh, some of the old ways of doing things um, just aren't working anymore and that you're well and truly ready uh, ready for a change. I mean, it is Monday. You perhaps take the view that uh, Monday is start of a new week. Uh, so, you know, you'd expect new week, uh, new reality, uh, new ideas. And... So when you look at what's going on around you uh, today, you may be thinking that a lot of it is 
somewhat stale. Um, that uh, this is all this is all from the past, and uh, really you would um, uh, you'd like to move on. Um, but cancer, uh, the moon is making a square to Neptune, um, and you know this square to Neptune. If you're in the Americas, it's going to perhaps be more of a feature of the morning, the first part of the day. But you know, everyone else, I do think, does need to give consideration to the fact that the moon is um, semi is square Neptune. So wherever you are in the world, um, the moon square Neptune does matter for Cancerians. And you know there is, you know, there is a risk that you um, are sent in the wrong direction. Um, it's also possible uh, with Moon square Neptune that your um, your boundaries may be um, infringed. Uh, okay, that might be through other people's emotions messing you up. That's one way in which boundaries can be infringed. Another way in which your boundaries can be infringed is through pollutants. You know, Neptune can be a planet of pollutants, um, uh, chemicals, um, uh, things that shouldn't be there being breathed in, being eaten, uh, that kind of. Uh, so you you do need um, you need do need to watch out for that. So Cancerians, um, be careful what you eat. Just eat stuff that is. Um, where you you know you know that you can trust it. Just don't eat any garbage today, Cancer. Um, it might be convenient to eat any garbage today, um, but I would uh, I would recommend against it. Um, it's yeah, it might be easy, might be convenient, but I think you might regret it. And just look at where you're going. You know, stay away from bad air. Um, uh, stay away from dusty and smoky environments, um, and you know. Again, going back to other people, you know, pollution can take many forms, and pollution can be about um, other people's negativity uh, or other people's unrealistic fantasies. People who are overly emotional um, should be avoided. I understand you're a Cancerian and you're very comfortable with your emotions, but. You don't want other people's emotions just um, infringing your boundaries and um, upsetting upsetting your uh, your equilibrium. So I, th I think that is something that you you have to be fairly wary of. Um, now, today the moon does change sign. For a Cancerian, that is important, and um, when that sign change happens it kind of depends where you are you know if you're in the americas the moon changes sign from sagittarius to capricorn um in the afternoon if you're in western europe uh that's going to be in the evening uh could be quite could be very late in the evening uh if you're in uh asia australia new zealand doesn't really affect you because the moon doesn't change sign. The moon remains in Sagittarius all day. But addressing Cancerians in, particularly in America, but also to a lesser extent in Western Europe, um, you could experience a change with them from the moon going from Sagittarius to um, Capricorn, uh, suddenly becoming, um, on one hand, more serious and more focused. On the other hand, more aware of the influence that um, other people can have over you, um, for better or for worse. I mean, after all, moon going into Cap moon going into Capricorn. Capricorn is your opposite sign, and uh, you may find that suddenly you have to deal with people, even if you're not dealing with them face to face. Suddenly, their presence makes pres their, their presence makes itself felt and then that's a situation that you will um you'll have to i won't say deal with uh but it's a situation that you have to be aware of and perhaps that that tells you what kind of day 
uh, tomorrow, um, Tuesday, um, is going to be like. Leo, you are pretty creative today. Uh, creative not just in terms of, um, you know, painting pictures uh, or uh, doing what you're good at. Um, creativity takes takes many forms. Um, but you're also quite creative in terms of dealing with your your social environment. Um, I, I think you, you will have... Um, you know, a natural facility for getting on with people and uh, bringing people together. Um, you don't really have to do much. Uh, you, you're, you're like uh, at the center of the web. And being at the center of the web, uh, you can make things happen. Um, it's therefore important, um, Leo, that uh, you... You always have, um, you always have availability that uh, you can be reached, um, and that you're able to reach other people, because today you can reach out to lots of different people, and you can bring these these bring these people together, and uh, it won't just be about you know your ideas and your your social creativity. It will be. Um, about your emotions as well. Um, it's just about a feeling um, about how people can get on with each other. Uh, you, you'll just know how people can get on with each other and you'll know what to say. So if you, I don't know, if you need to bring two people together, uh, you will know how to, you'll know how to do it. So it might actually be quite a good day for if you're a, a matchmaker. Um, people who appear to have no n not much in common you can you can really make it make it clear to them that yeah they do have things in common um and you're just a person to um to emphasize that um now going back to your creativity i yes i you can do something special whether it's with other people or whether it's um with um with just something you're into whether it's art or whatever art or writing or whatever you like to do um but you know with the moon i suppose with the moon sextile uh venus uh particularly at the beginning of the day uh particularly if you're not in the americas um if you're in europe asia um australasia moon sextile venus uh does does really facilitate relationships in general um you just come over as being a fun person that uh you know that people want to deal with that people want to be with um and uh i think uh you need to yeah you need to be around and you need to make sure that you are you are there and that that people can um get in contact with you and uh your own ideas uh should not be underestimated you do have ideas about the way things should be done now i've told a lot of the other signs uh so far to and indeed to everyone in general to be wary of fantasy uh and fantasy is always a problem it could, there's always scope for delusion but I think in your case, Leo, I think you do have some genuinely really good ideas, which you've been working on maybe for a couple of weeks. But it, it, these ideas are starting to crystallize. And it may actually be time for you to bring these ideas um, out into the open. Um, see what the world out there has to say about them. Now, some of these ideas may not be fully formed, but they may have reached a point where you need to get some feedback. And it may be you won't get much feedback because people will say, yeah, that is a good idea. Um, something you can present to society. This is the way it should be done. Uh, OK, some changes might be required, but 
by and large, I think today you, you, you do have a good understanding um, about the way things should be moving um, from now on. Virgo. So Virgo, um, Mercury is your ruler. Uh, Mercury is in your opposite sign of Pisces and Mercury is uh, making a sextile aspect to Uranus. Um, so Mercury sextile Uranus is not really a very Virgoan aspect, um, you know, the st the standard stereotype of Virgo is someone who is careful, um, who um, f focuses on um, on the detail, and you know very often doesn't do anything to rock the boat. But Mercury sextile Uranus um, is actually quite an exciting aspect. Um, it's maybe not in particularly exciting signs. I mean, Mercury in Pisces is a bit. Is, is a water sign. You don't really associate Pisces with explosions, uh, except maybe underwater explosions. I don't know. But uh, Pisces, you know, it's a negative sign. It's it's a feminine sign. Uh, likewise with Uranus. Uranus, yes, Uranus might be in the planet of revolutions, but it is in Taurus. Um, but still, Mercury is sextile Uranus. Uh, so you are at some level quite inspired. You you have ideas. You, uh, you can see the world in a new way, perhaps in a way that you haven't quite seen it before. So, you know, today's Monday, the start of a new week, and it's this development of new ideas. Maybe the time to bring new ideas almost out into the open, perhaps not quite out into the open. Um, I think that, you know, many Virgos are still feeling um, a little bit introspective, um, just feeling that you have to be a bit careful. You have to take things one step at a time. You don't want to make a fool of yourself. Uh, you don't want to attract attention to yourself. Uh, but, you know, things are changing. And over the next day or two, um, you're going to be a lot less introspective. Indeed, if you're in the Americas, I think you'll start to you'll start to get the change um, this afternoon. Um, as you know, as the moon moves, uh, moves into moves into Capricorn. You know, Capricorn is an earth sign and like Virgo. So there's a there's a sympathy between Virgo and Capricorn. If you're not in the Americas, uh, then okay, this may be more about something going on um, uh, on sort of tomorrow or perhaps very late this evening. Um, but you're getting ready, uh, Virgo, and I think that with this with this Mercury sextile Uranus, yeah, there is a sense of excitement, and uh, you you you, you want to make that you want to make. Uh, make some changes and maybe you want to tell other people about your changes I mean about the cha kind of changes you want to make after all Mercury is in Pisces it's it's in your opposite sign it's a, Pisces is a sign that's very much um, connected um, connected with relationships and so yes allow yourself to be excited don't 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 ask yourself too many questions uh, questions would um, would spoil things um, uh, so yeah it's it's okay to have good ideas it's even okay to um, express uh, good ideas um, don't on the other hand listen too much to other people um, you know your I think that your some of some members of your family uh may not really understand what's going on but they may actually think they understand what's going on uh so they may tell you things that are not really correct uh they may give you advice which is not really based based on anything realistic uh so yeah 
you've, you've got your family to deal with. Your family are important at the moment. Um, just be with them and be there for them. But don't necessarily follow their lead. And indeed, you might have to suggest to them that they've, um, they've got something wrong. And I think this applies to other people in general. Uh, yes, other people are important. Um, you have to always take into account other people. Um, but today, that fantasy that I've talked about, um, it, it's not about you. It's about the people around you. Um, there's a lot of bad ideas. Uh, your ideas are fine, I think. But other people's ideas are not good in many cases. Um, they don't understand the full picture. Um, so, sure, listen to what people have to say, but uh, don't, don't follow anyone's lead unless, unless you really know what you're doing, unless it makes sense to you. Uh, that, that's, that is what... Uh, matters today Libra I think today uh, there is a certain amount of tension uh, with you uh, there's a sense that uh, something is holding you back uh, you may feel something's holding you back uh, and that that could make you somewhat nervous uh, you, you, you just don't have all the freedom you'd like. Uh, I, I I don't know why you feel this way. Now it could be something. Um, it could be quite something quite internal. Uh, you're holding yourself back, but you know you want to create a big change, and it feels that something has to be overthrown almost. Um, some set of restrictions on you needs to be overthrown. Now, that could be something within yourself. It could also be something in the outside world. Some aspect of the outside world is just stopping you from doing what you would like to do. Um, and uh, at, a, at a certain stage, you may feel uh, that you... You have to do something. So, Libra, I would urge you not to panic about this. Um, you can you can make the breakthrough you would like to make. Uh, but I don't think you have to be violent about it. Um, I mean, I'm talking about violent in a general sense. I'm not talking about violence in terms of people getting hurt. Um, you know, remember, you know, the moon is making a sextile aspect to Venus. Um, and, you know, so Venus is your ruler. The moon sextile, no, sextile Venus, it's a relatively gentle influence. And you're able to assert yourself, yeah, in quite a gentle way. So you may feel that you can't get anything done uh, that you can't make the breakthrough but perhaps really that's because you haven't tried if you were to explain to people what the issue was uh, using standard pleasant Libran language um, okay you don't have to um, worry about your every word just being yourself, uh, explain what the issue is, explain what you would like. Uh, and I think you might be surprised at how effective you'd be. Um, so when you actually tell people what you want, uh, you may find that what you thought was a huge block, something really holding you up, is actually nothing at all. Uh, it's therefore today going to be very important that you are optimistic I, it, it's okay to be optimistic um, I don't think today you're going to, I don't think you're going to be infected by the kind of delusion and fantasy that some people are going to be affected by I, I don't think that's I don't think that's really your problem your job is to just to um, 
could probably tell people what you want, tell people what you don't want and uh, explain yourself. And yeah, I think you'll get uh, a, a very sympathetic, uh, a sympathetic reception. Um, that's not the only thing going on. Um, I think that Libra, it would be a good idea today to reconfigure certain things. There are certain things uh, in your life uh, that you've maybe got used to. Okay, when I say in your life, perhaps at least until since last week, um, that they've been building up perhaps over the last few days and you've kind of got used to it. And uh, what's happened over the last few days uh, may have been fine for then, may have been fine for the weekend, but, you know, things now have to move on. Things have to change. Um, some things are just simply um, out of place. You can see that they're out of place. I mean, you're a Libran. Uh, Librans... It, the, the symbol for Libra is the balance, uh, and so when you can see that things are out of place, well, you're going to want to, you 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 want to recreate that balance, and that is something you can do. And the great thing is that you're not actually going to have to explain yourself; you just go and do it. Uh, move one thing here, move it from here to there, move it from A to B. Uh, maybe talking about physical objects, um, maybe talking about your ideas, just a bit of reorganization, and it's going to be great. And uh, in the end, uh, I think the day should should run, you know, very well. Things should should start to run smoothly. Just 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 don't feel inhibited. Don't feel that. Don't think that other people aren't interested in what you have to say. Don't think that other people are not going to take action in term, but as a result of what you say. They will. But you've got to say, you've got to say something. You've got to explain. And once you've explained, um, uh, a lot of your concerns will, I think, evaporate. Scorpio. Freedom is going to really matter today. Um, you, you know, you're not going to be comfortable with really any form of restriction. Uh, you're not in the mood for being restricted. And you can get your, you can get your freedom without really having to make a fuss about it. Uh, you know, Scorpio is a sign that is... Um, about often about inner processes uh, something happens on an inner level and straight away something happens on an outer level and um, you're going to end up feeling today that something that was really bothering you has just disappeared you know you can break your chains and i i think uh i think that is that's that's really important and it's your your desire desire is a word key word for scorpio your desire will carry you through and uh um it's it's not a question of whether people uh approve of what you're doing disapprove of what you, you're doing. It just doesn't matter. It just really doesn't come into it. Um, you have a state of mind, you have a set of desires, and it just happens on the outs in terms of the outer world out there. It just it just happens and uh, you, you don't really have to um, have to worry about it. Um, I, but I'm I'm not suggesting though that you're going to be difficult um a problem uh, for other people no not really uh i think that uh in many respects I, you'll be able to create the social world around you um if there's something you want in that social world around you uh, i think i think you can you can make it happen uh you can indeed uh, engage in a certain amount of social engineering. Uh, 
So, you know, if you even if you even if you don't know people very well, indeed, perhaps particularly if you don't know people well, you can um, give an impression that uh, particular ways of communicating are the right ways of communicating. And in that sense, uh, I think that you can um, bring people together. And that's especially the case if you're involved in any form of um organization I, I think you can you can do that though we shouldn't forget uh we shouldn't forget your family i think in terms of your family i think that you can um you can bring people together and bring family members together and perhaps uh, overcome uh their own their particular concerns um and so in that sense scorpio i would have said that you were um a force for good and uh, if you're a force for good, then, uh, the, you know, the world out there has to see you. The world out there has to experience you. And, uh, yeah, you can make the world a better place. And uh, really, uh, Scorpio, that's all there is to be said. Sagittarius, Jupiter is your ruler. And Jupiter is making a semi-square to Neptune. Um, I've talked about this Jupiter semi-square Neptune a lot uh, today. I, I, I think it is the most important thing going on. Um, it's been brewing uh, for the last couple of days. It will still be in action for the next couple of days. Um, but today, the Jupiter semi-square Neptune is exact. Um, so, Sagittarius, there is some danger of making mistakes, of um, perhaps thinking that something is possible when, in fact, it is completely impossible. Um, and the question is, why would you be making these kind of mistakes? Um, it may be that you have got a foundational misunderstanding going on. Now, I don't want to make that sound overly dramatic, but, uh, you know, foundations do matter. Yeah, especially now uh, when, you know, you've got Sun, Mercury, Saturn, and, of course, Neptune um, going through Pisces. And from a Pisces, from a Sagittarian perspective, Pisces is a sign that is very much connected with the foundations of things. And so Neptune in Pisces um, making a, a semi-square to Jupiter, yeah, could undermine you. And it's kind of an undermining that you are going to almost actively embrace, or at least there is um, a danger that you will actively embrace your own undermining. Uh, you may erroneously think that certain things need to be changed you may ch you may make some changes with considerable enthusiasm because you think you're doing the right thing when in fact you're doing completely the wrong thing um, now i don't want to be a killjoy here uh, there is a there is a a favorable dimension to this jupiter jupiter semi square neptune um, it is about new ideas. It's about new inspirations. It can be about spirituality. Uh, your imagination and perhaps even your dream world are going to be are going to be very vivid. Um, lots of imagery imagery will be conjured up, and that's good, provided you don't take action on it. Um, just observe, um, and. I should say something about ideology as well and belief. You know, Sagittarians do have strong beliefs um, about the way the world should be run, uh, getting really angry about things that are not happening, that should be happening. Um, and that's part of being a Sagittarius. But some of your beliefs about the world may just get a bit out of control today. Um, and 
I'm not saying I'm not saying you're going to be wrong, uh, but what might be wrong is your over well, it's your exaggeration. Don't exaggerate on the basis of a belief. Um, exaggerated beliefs, really getting obsessed about philosophy, ideology, um, about the world and its problems. Yeah, it could happen, Sagittarius, but I wouldn't recommend it. I think in that, if you were to do that, uh, it could end up being disruptive, and I don't think it would uh, would get you anywhere. Um, you know, remembering that you know there it's not just that you know it's just just not just that Jupiter is semi square Neptune. It's also that the Moon, while moving through Sagittarius, your sign is making a square to Neptune, and that is going to be a further pressure um, on your foundations. And so, in your um, in your domestic life, when you're at home, you know, be careful, be careful about appliances. Um, don't do anything that could, uh, you know, uh, make things break. Or if something does break, if there is a problem, and if there is a physical problem in your home, some uh, some appliance goes wrong, or uh, I don't know, plumbing, whatever. You just just don't do the first thing that comes to mind, um, and don't don't think that a problem in the home. You know, when I talk about problem in the home, I think I'm probably more talking about something like a pipe or plumbing or whatever, rather than this sort of interpersonal family problem. But if there is a problem, don't assume that it will sort itself out all by itself. Um, it may require, it may actually require some engagement. Nevertheless, having said all that, today you're a great communicator. Uh, you're an exciting person. Uh, people like what you have to say. People are interested in what you have to say. And um, overall, Sagittarius, I think you can make a very good impression. Capricorn. To an extent, Capricorn, um, it does depend on where you are. Um, and, you know, that is the, that's the problem for me, Um doing these sign forecasts uh, across all the time zones um uh, you know I, I know that i'm in the united states but only half the people who uh, listen to this are in the united states and canada um, half the people who listen to me are not in the americas as far as i can see as far as i understand um and it's all about the uh, the moon and its movement into capricorn um so if I, as i said the moon moves into your star sign sorry the moon the moon moves into your sign whether you're looking at it from perspective of the ascendant or your sun sign or even your moon sign the moon moves into whatever sign you're looking at this reading for uh the moon moves into your sign um you know quarter past nine in the evening in london but it's in the afternoon in the americas so if you're in the americas um, you know, last half of the day, uh, you may have a real sense that uh, things have changed. Uh, you may feel uh, that uh, you are um, in control, um, that uh, a period of, I won't say chaos, but a period of uncertainty is coming to an end and that you can now start to start to engage with the world and you can start to be uh, more realistic um, and also perhaps a little bit selfish um, there's nothing wrong with being selfish and so with the moon moving into Capricorn uh, there may be a bit of self-interest um, creeping in there um, if you are in uh, not in the Americas then what I've said just said doesn't particularly but doesn't particularly apply um you're you're still feeling a sense that uh you need to be a step back uh from the world and its problems uh you know you have lots of ideas lots of impressions 
perhaps impressions is the word, um, impressions about the way uh, things are working out. But those impressions uh, can be quite nebulous, difficult to know exactly where they're going, difficult to know how they're going to um, how they're going to unfold. Um, but uh, I think Capricorn, regardless of where you are, whether you're in the Americas or whether you're, you know, whether you're in the rest of the world, um, I think you do have a fundamental idea about the way things should be and the way things are going to be unfolding very soon. It's an idea that you probably can't entirely verbalise, um, but it's there and you know that something is changing and you know that it's a fortunate change and you know also, I think, that it's down to you to make that change happen. Um, but because you can't really verbalise what needs to happen, uh, that suggests that now is not the right time. You know, again, wherever your time zone is, to, to, today uh, it is about an idea that isn't properly formed. Uh, it may be a strong idea, but it's not properly formed. It's a germ of an idea. The idea is just beginning, and it, it will only be... Um, you know, over the next the next few days, that that idea will will firmly um, develop. Aquarius, you're at a stage when you're feeling that certain people and situations have have done what they need to do, uh, at least as far as you're concerned, um, and you might then take the view that uh, you need to sort of back off. I mean, you've, you've, you, you, you've listened to what someone has said, you perhaps experienced people's company, and you get the picture, and perhaps now, Aquarius, um, yeah, you, you may be, well, you may be take the view, you don't need people anymore. I mean, that sounds a bit callous, doesn't it? Saying you don't need people anymore. Uh, but that might, might be how you feel. Um, but I would probably disagree with that analysis. Um, there are going to be a couple of people who I think you, you do need. Um, uh, I think you know who they are. And today you can have um, very useful contacts and connections um, with, um, with, with, these, with, these, with these people, whoever they are. I mean, you know who they are. Um, uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to sort of tell you exactly who they are. I mean, how can I know? Um, it, it depends on you. Um, and, um, you know, friendship, just for the sake of friendship, you, know, sh you, sh you shouldn't dismiss that. Uh, yes, in the short term, you are about to be distancing yourself from certain people, but I think it's a short term thing. And for the moment, um, yeah, you do need to, um, you do need to keep engaging. And while you're doing that, there is no harm in considering your own selfish interests, especially when it comes to money. Um, because you actually have a fairly clear idea about what is going on uh, in terms of at least one particular financial situation. You're starting to understand it. Uh, it is making sense. Um, and, you know, today with, with Mercury moving through Pisces, making a sextile aspect to Uranus it's you know it's a very fortunate aspect this Mercury sextile Uranus and I think it, it could have um, a financial impact so you know this aspect is going to allow you to yeah to really engage um, with uh, your finances if you want to I mean okay of course you don't have to 
there's no obligation here. I'm not talking about a financial problem. I'm just saying that there's some way in which you can um, make your finances better, get a better understanding of them. Um, and it's going to be a somewhat intuitive process. Um, but if you just look at the, look at things and look at uh, where the money is flowing, where the money is, um, I think you'll have a good sense um, of what you need to be what you need to be doing, um, and you might also realise that uh, in your in your home. Uh, a few changes might be required. There may be some some aspect of your home environment which either is costing you money, which is unnecessary, or is not making you money, which is also unnecessary. So in terms of your home and where you live, there may be a way to um, reduce expenditure and even increase income. Um, you know, it depends on your particular situation about how that's going to work out. So, so do bear that in mind. And so, if you have a sudden idea about your home and what you can do with your home and how you can save money and make extra money, um, then then do something about it. Okay, you don't have to completely put everything into action today, but it's something to bear in mind and something to work on. Um, for example, over the next few days or or the next week. Pisces, I've talked a lot today about a semi-square between Jupiter and Neptune. Um, you know, Jupiter is your ruler. Um, uh, you know, Jupiter rules Pisces. Uh, I mean, I know some people say that uh, Neptune rules Pisces, but of course it is, um, it is Jupiter uh, that rules Pisces. And... If Jupiter, if Jupiter rules Pisces, uh, that means that you are impacted by this semi-square between Jupiter and Neptune. Um, Neptune is through, is moving through your star sign, or your sun, or your ascendant sign, or your moon sign, depending on how you're looking at these, um, looking at my sign forecasts. And I, I think there is a danger here that you might confuse yourself it, it may not even be the the outside world confusing you you might just confuse yourself um you, you might look at what's going on around you you might you might look at what you're supposed to be doing next you might start trying to plan and it's just a danger that you'll 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 focus on the wrong things um it may be about priorities. Um, you know, there's a set of priorities you should be following, but there's a set of priorities that you could so easily find yourself getting involved in. Um, deciding something is important when, in fact, it is completely unimportant or perhaps has nothing to do with you. Um, getting engaged in um, another person's world, another person's reality thinking another person's reality is important to you um that other person could be on the other side of the other side of the planet um it could you, you could think it's a pressing importance uh that you absolutely need to do something about it but it is your number one priority um in a way you could say you're exaggerating your own importance there what can you do uh, you have to think about yourself, and if you and if you create sets of priorities um, based on something that you actually have no control over, then yeah, it's it's a it is well, it's a recipe for chaos, isn't it? Um, so, uh, Pisces, keep it simple, uh, and. I would say keep it local. <laughs> um, it's your own locality that matters. And you need to make sense of your own locality um, before worrying um, about anything else. Now, 
I understand that I've been a bit uh, a bit negative. Preachy? No. Me? Preachy? No, 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 no. Uh, but um, on a positive note, uh, the moon does make a sextile to Venus. Um, as it should have have an you know have it should have a fortunate impact upon you um especially uh if especially this morning in the americas um and probably all day or most of the day if you're in other parts of other parts of the world um but, you know you're able to present yourself effectively um in a clear no nonsense kind of way and in the same at the same time some of your ideas not all of your ideas um could be could be very useful um you know it's not just the fact that the moon is semi sextile um sorry the moon is semi sextile venus it's also the fact that mercury while moving through pisces your sign uh is sextile uranus so you can be exciting uh you can get people's attention um, now don't get people's attention about stuff that is unimportant to them you have to consider what do people want to hear um what are people interested in because some of the things that you're interested in are of no real relevance to anyone else um so you've got to be a bit discerning there but if you can communicate with the right material communicate with the right ideas um then yes i think you will get a um, a very favorable reception the i ching the i ching is of course there to give us an alternative view to the astrology uh it's it's there to give us um if you like an independent approach and as always i asked a question um the question i asked um you know what is monday going to be like uh, for those watching the eating segment of this video of course if you don't want to have your eating done then you don't have to then you can skip um the eating segment of this video and i got a single hexagram now don't panic when you see this hexagram it's not as bad as it looks um and that single hexagram i got was hexagram 18 illness uh now the wilhelm translation um of the, of the eating uh describes this as um working on what has been spoilt uh and it has in parentheses or decay uh, the uh greg uh, winkup's translation he translates it as illness so i've gone to the greg winkup translation uh, not least because it's just one word um it's not as negative as it sounds um it is about an illness uh that we can recover from and it is almost certainly not a physical illness um it's about the concept that something is wrong and it needs to be fixed and the eating is pretty confident that we can fix it um it's it may not even be our fault um very often the thing that has been spoiled the thing that has gone wrong um is something that it wasn't had nothing to do with us it was someone else that caused the problem but it is down to us to sort it out and so i know you have to think where what is that problem um it'll be different for different people um um if it is a physical illness uh i mean i'll be talking i mean obviously i'm talking about something minor here just um i'm not uh, um you know just you know i don't know <laughs> you you you're just not feeling yourself maybe um whatever it could be could be just something i don't know if you're if you're, if you're a smoker and you're if you're watching this and you're 
coughing your guts out because you're smoking two packs of 40 a day, then okay, fair enough. And that's obvious what that means. And physical illness, just stop smoking. But uh, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, it's um, physical. Um, I, so, but you, whatever it is, you can't, you can't carry on with what you're doing. You know what the problem is. And now you've just got to stop and sort it out. Um, it it won't take long, probably. Uh, the I Ching t- talks about three days before, three days after. Could take a few days um, to really address the issue. Um, and it, it won't be difficult. Once you absolutely focus on what needs to be sorted out, um, you'll make good progress. And... Um, uh, the issue um, will be resolved. Now it may be the case. Uh, I was looking at um, I was looking at the nuclear hexagram. I haven't put up the nuclear hexagram. But the nuclear hexagram, the hexagram in the middle, uh, is a hexagram fifty four, which is um, um, the which is the uh, Marrying maiden. Oh yeah, I did put it up. Yeah, the, the hexagram in, in the, the hexagram in the middle is um, the marrying maiden. The nuclear hexagram, because because this is a locked hexagram. Illness doesn't move; it's just locked here. But when we look at the hexagram in the middle by taking off the top and the bottom, if we take off the top and the bottom line, uh, and make the so we have four lines in the middle. We take the top three as the top trigram and the bottom three is a bottom trigram we get that see you see how that comes together uh, the marrying maiden that might give us some extra information about what the problem is uh, it may be that someone or something has come into our lives without uh, without full permission we haven't realized what we were getting ourselves involved with and that's causing problems, or it maybe we've done. It's us that, that we have just wanted to get involved with something. We've been very enthusiastic about it. Uh, we've been too quick to get involved, like the marrying maiden. And now we're in it. We're realizing it's not really working out, or there is an there is a problem here. So that might be something to do with what we need to um, deal with 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 illness. So maybe part of the problem is that we've just taken on too much, or someone has intruded into our life or something has intruded into our life and they just it all needs to be cleared and so that might be something to consider but uh, the I Ching is is very confident um, that whatever the, this problem is whatever is causing the decay whatever whatever it is it can be resolved and hence you know the Wilhelm uh, translation of this it, title is working on what has been spoilt. Yes, we can work on what has been spoilt, and I think we can um, resolve it. Astrology now, and I want to consider this uh, tragic uh, shooting last year, um, which led to a 25-year prison sentence for um, Kevin... um, Kevin um, Monaghan. Um, so I will. St- so top right. I think that is his picture. I hope that's his picture. And uh, so he's sixty-six years old. Uh, he's just been sentenced to twenty-five years in prison for um, second-degree murder. Uh, and I th- also I think there was something to do with tampering with the evidence. And I think the judge didn't feel he had any remorse but he's sort of almost thought that he'd done you know he that he had had no choice or whatever it wasn't his fault people had i suppose he he, he was a difficult person um i do not have his time of birth um i do have his date of birth um at least i got his date of birth from wikipedia other websites say the same say the same thing uh, so he was born apparently on October the 28th, 1957, at noon in Salem, New York. Uh, so this is someone who is been described as dyspeptic, 
uh, dyspeptic, uh, well, of course, that gives concepts of the concept of indigestion, but a dyspeptic personality is perhaps someone who is irritable and difficult and he uh, enjoys his own, pr prefers his own company and finds the outside world just annoying. Um, uh, well, I suppose you could say that that is that we, he's got the Sun, Mercury, Neptune in Scorpio. Um, Scorpio at its worst, perhaps. I mean, Scorpio um, has a reputation, doesn't it, for um, being really into its space, stay away. Um, he had a long, apparently his driveway was a quarter of a mile long, Um and yet yeah, just people kept coming up his driveway, which I suppose for a Scorpio is quite annoying when people are constantly intruding. Um, and I suppose he was behaving like a Scorpio, wasn't he? I mean, behaving not like a normal Scorpio, but a stereotyped Scorpio. Um, Scorpio at its worst. So, you know, someone gets too close to the scorpion and it just stings it, it fires off a, a shotgun um that's that's what happened um uh Merc sun mercury neptune and scorpio and look at that sun um his sun is two degrees short of the conjunction of mercury two degrees short of um the conjunction three degrees short of the conjunction with Neptune, two and a half degrees. So he's got Sun on the Mercury-Neptune midpoint. So if you've got Sun on the Mercury-Neptune midpoint, um, this is not someone who's always good at making decisions, um, particularly on-the-spot decisions. Um, you know, I think that, um, you know, I'm not going to give any opinions on the Second Amendment, but uh, I suppose the problem about having a gun is and using guns is that uh, I believe if you if you want to have any chance of being useful with a gun in terms of protecting yourself I think you need to have training every week it's not just about whether you can shoot straight you need psychological training and knowing when to when when it's appropriate to pull the trigger and when it's not appropriate and so here's a gun owner uh with sun on the mercury neptune midpoint um and so that's uh a bit a bit confused isn't it uh not not able to make good decisions on the spot perhaps um uh, with sun on the mercury neptune midpoint um he also has moon in capricorn and i think one of the comments that the judge made uh, was that, that seemed to upset the judge was that you know he said that Kevin Monaghan said, well, he was just looking forward to just going back to fixing his home and doing uh, motocross. I think he liked racing motorbikes or something. Um, and the judge took exception to that. That didn't help in terms of, that's why he got this l very large, sent high sentence for second degree murder. Uh, that's mooning, maybe that's also mooning Capricorn at its worst. He's definitely got moon in Capricorn, even though we don't know his time of birth, because the moon is right in the center of the sign. Now, moon in Capricorn, there's nothing wrong with a bit of self-interest with moon in Capricorn. Uh, nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, that's the nature of moon in Capricorn. Um, but it can be uh, overly focused on itself and its own interests to the exclusion um, of all all else and that moon square squares the mars jupiter conjunction now i have said on numerous occasions that the mars jupiter pair is not uh not particularly fortunate it can be not particularly fortunate it depends um but mars jupiter can be about excessive action um going over the top doing responding to a situation in a completely inappropriate way and so he has that mars conjunct he has does have that mars conjunct jupiter even though it's uh it's it's relatively wide it looks as if it's around five degrees apart but as i will be explaining later um that mars jupiter conjunction really is um relevant um 
and it's uh yeah it's potentially square his moon as far as um uh other things going on in his chart you know he has neptune um he has Neptune on his Mars Uranus midpoint. So Mars Uranus would be an association with um, uh, um, with violence, shooting, that fits. Uh, his Mars Uranus midpoint would be about uh, something like uh, uh Neptune on the Mars Uranus midpoint. Uh, let's just, you know, I'll just show you the Mars Mars Uranus midpoint here. There's his, there's his, um, there's his Neptune tree. Uh, no, I got that. Yeah, there's Neptune on his Mars Uranus midpoint. Um, Neptune aspecting his Mars Uranus midpoint. So Neptune Mars Uranus is about. Um, about violence and sort of Neptune is about just getting confused about it, not not being appropriate, just having wrong ideas about when is the right time to um, use use violence. Uh, as far as the generational thing, you know, back to this Reddit, um, um, this Reddit post saying it's all about baby boomers. It seems to be quite a popular thing to blame baby boomers. Remember, I must emphasize I'm a baby boomer, um, born in 1962. Um, but it seems to be there seems to be a certain group of people that like to blame ba- baby boomers for all the world's problems. Um, it, I've, I've noticed it quite a lot. And so he is just, you know, this is just typical baby boomer behavior, supposedly. I'm not, I'm, I, I don't think that's true, but I'm just, I'm just reporting back what I read. So what, what would make him, um, what would make him a baby boomer from a generational perspective? What are the, um, because the baby boomer, um, uh, the baby boomer um, period from 1946 to 1962 is, or 63, 64, it's, it's quite a long period of time. And you, you don't get a single planet being, a single outer planet being through that period the whole time. So there may be just different types of baby boomer. Um, he's the type of baby boomer that's got Uranus in Leo and Pluto in Virgo. Um, I suppose you could say Uranus in Leo he, that's a generation of people who, on a positive sense, can be very creative. Uh, can, um, as a generation, uh, they do have a sense of themselves, of themselves and their creativity. Uh, but in his case, I suppose that Uranus in Leo, um, the unpleasant side of it has come in. Uh, it's not just about being creative. It's just it's become totally self-focused. Uh, Uranus in Leo um, and become really focused on him and become it's Uranus is in a fixed sign and uh, it's kind of square his sun so it's the sun is picking up on his Uranus in Leo uh, and his Mercury is picking up on his Uranus in Leo um, and so he's become very focused on himself and his rights and uh Pluto in Virgo. That Pluto in Virgo is actually conjunct the hypothetical planet Zeus. And Zeus is often connected with firearms and um explosions. Um so that may be uh, maybe an, another way in which um in which that is that in that in which uh that is working out. Um his uh solar return uh, before, just have a, look, have a look at his solar return before he he did the killing. So he did the killing. The killing happened around, on April the fifteenth, uh, twenty twenty-three, um, and so this, his twenty twenty-two solar return. Um, there's his twenty twenty-two solar return. Um, he has got. Uh, Mars square Jupiter in his solar return. Now, why does that matter? 
the fact that he's got Mars square Jupiter in his solar return. It matters because he's got Mars Jupiter conjunction um, in his natal chart, and so with Mars square, with Mars square uh, Jupiter in his solar return, it emphasizes his Mars Jupiter. Um, it makes his Mars Jupiter more prominent. Um, and that Jupiter is on the Aries point. Jupiter in that solar return is at 29.59 Pisces. Uh, it's on Skeet, a fixed star connected with disaster, um, with shipwrecks. Uh, okay, this is not a shipwreck, but, uh, you know, it, it, we, you know, we see the picture. Also, Mars is, Mars is um, square Neptune. So Mars is a bit of a problem there. Now, a lot of people are going to have that. But for him, this solar return seems to matter. So I think that the solar return does provide a warning, but I do understand that it's complete hindsight and I do not have his time of birth, so I can't be entirely precise about you know how it's working out. But uh, also the moon is, we don't know where the moon is, but uh, the moon is, you know, possibly square Neptune. So I think the solar return may indicate... Uh, um, may indicate a few issues there. Then uh, there is the question about what what happened, what was going on um when he did the sh- when he did the shooting. Um so here is the here's the chart for when he um when he shot um Kaylin Gillis. Um I've gone for 9.45, Hebron, New York. Um, it, it was before 10 o'clock, and I think the car drove in at nine at 9.45. So it would have been somewhere between 9.45 and 10 o'clock. So it was probably a bit before this, um, a bit early, uh, you know, sorry, a bit afterwards. Um, but still, at 9.45 itself... Uh, Uranus is um, Uranus is on the seventh house cusp, not exactly there, but it's kind of close enough. And Saturn is at four eleven on the IC. Now that Saturn, that Moon con- Saturn conjunction becomes Im- becomes very important, as we'll see when we look at Kaylin Gellis's horoscope. Um, but w- the planet that I'm especially interested in is Jupiter. Jupiter is at 2245 um, Aries. So why does that matter? Uh, so let's let's look at the uh, let's look at the chart um, that there is um, Kevin Monaghan's chart in the middle and that's a chart of the shooting. Now I I put a lot of emphasis on the Mars Jupiter that Mars Jupiter is a, is a difficult energy. Jupiter was at twenty two forty five um, Aries at the time of the shooting. Um, Kevin Monaghan's Mars is at twenty two thirty five Libra. Um, okay, I don't know his time of birth. It could have been a bit before, could have been a bit after, but pretty much he had Jupiter exactly opposition his Mars. Um, and remember, he had Mars Jupiter square in his in his um solar return for that year and so it was jupiter opposition mars that was the immediate aspect um that led to the shooting i think uh that was a, that was the aspect of the day um and then it was the time the, the moon 141 pisces moon was opposition his pluto and pluto is a generational planet Pluto in Virgo, the late baby boomer. Um, something about his Pluto. Remember, he had Pluto conjunct Zeus. So he has moon on his Zeus Pluto midpoint. Actually, I'm going to just, I'm not, I have no idea whether this is going to be relevant or not. And of course, Zeus is a hypothetical planet. Um, but I just wanted to see what Vita said about moon on Zeus Pluto midpoint. I've no idea what he's going to say. I haven't, didn't look it up. Um, but 
with Zeus on... OK, this is Moon, what Vita says about Moon on the Pluto-Zeus midpoint. Oh, doesn't sound very good. Uh, I don't think Vita got this one. He, Vita says, the community works hard to rejuvenate their neighbourhoods. That's a bit of a fail, I think, for Vita. Um, I think you could see the moon... I would interpret that as, you know, the moon It can be about a woman. It should be about a woman, Zeus, Pluto... I think, given that Pluto can be, Zeus can be about firearms, I would have said Moon on the Zeus-Pluto midpoint could be seen as a woman um, being killed by a firearm. I think the symbolism works there with Moon opposition, um, uh, the the Zeus-Pluto midpoint. And it's also perhaps that Moon hitting his Pluto, his... That Pluto in Virgo, baby boomer, uh, with that Pluto conjunct Zeus, um, yeah, maybe that's what that's what the moon um, moon was doing. So overall, I think the the key the key aspect there was the fact that he had um, he had Jupiter um, uh, Jupiter making. Um, um, uh, Jupiter making the, Jupiter making an opposition um, to his Mars. Um, then uh, we have the horoscope of the woman he killed. Um, I, I, I'm fairly confident I got her birth. I got her birth date right. There were several obituaries. There was an obituary to her which had which had her birth date. Um, I'm. I've, this is her noon chart. So she was born um, February the 23rd, um, 2003 in Saratoga Springs, New York. Um, we can see that she has, uh, she has a Mars Saturn opposition. Now, lots of people have Mars Saturn oppositions. Um, you know, there is her Mars at 24 Sagittarius. There is her Saturn at 22 Gemini. So, yeah, lots of people have that Mars Saturn opposition and nothing bad happens to them. Um, it was perhaps unfortunate uh, that she, um, uh, that she um, went into this driveway when Jupiter was at 22, you know, was at 22. Um, at 22 Aries so uh, Jupiter was sextile her Saturn and it was kind of trine her Mars so Jupiter was hitting her Mars Saturn opposition but not by hard aspects by a trine Um, that's a reminder perhaps that trines are not always fortunate trines can just make things happen easily Um, now looking at uh what was going on uh for her when um when this shooting happened by the way she's got the sun opposition her nodal ax- ac- her nodal axis so there's her sun uh opposition her nodes um and that seems to be um uh no, that's a wrong, a wrong one uh sorry it's uh, okay, so this is uh, Kaylin Gillis in the middle, um, and that's the time. That's the time of the shooting. So y- you can see she was she was young. She's twenty years old, um, just looking for a party, and then she died because of it. Because of this guy who shouldn't have had a gun, but uh, and was just obsessed about his own privacy. And then you know the car was actually driving away when he. Um, when he pulled the trigger, I think I think he's and he lied, but I think he lied as well. He's uh, to begin with. He firstly told the police it was probably the hunters that did it or something like that. So Saturn, when this happened, was at four degrees eleven minutes Pisces. Now I don't know the time of birth for Kaylin Gillis, but at noon on the day she was born. The sun was at 4.40 Pisces. So the sun would have been anywhere from 
I don't know, for uh, 10 Pisces through to, say, 510 Pisces. So she had Saturn conjunct her son um, when this happened. Um, and Saturn was not just conjunct her son, Saturn was on her nodes. So Saturn was squaring, uh, there's her node, her nodal axis. Not wasn't exact. Um, Saturn was just moving on to her sun. It was possibly about half a degree away. I don't think it was exact unless she was born right at the beginning of the day. And so in this case, it was having Saturn on her sun. She she died with Saturn on her sun. Normally, Saturn, Saturn transits to your sun are not really um, a particularly big deal. Uh, I know, you know, we dra we over we dramatize them, but usually it's just a, a cap. Usually, a couple of days of feeling a bit depressed, and that's it. And uh, but in this case, um, it was obviously more serious, and this leads to what was the relationship between these two people that really didn't know each other, but they just had this meeting at nine forty-five on April the fifteenth. Um, what was what was the connection uh, between them? Um, so we've got. Um, uh, I put. I don't know because I don't have a time of birth for either. So I've got Kayleen Gillis in the middle, uh, Kevin Monahan uh, on the outside, and the link that I found, but was perhaps uh, most important was. Uh, her Venus. Her Venus is at 22 degrees uh, C Capricorn. Um, and his Mars was at 22 degrees 35 Libra. So Mars square Venus. So his, his Mars square her Venus. Venus, that's her. It's a non-projected planet. That's her as a young woman. Mars, that's him as the aggressor, and that's him shooting her. That seems to be how it fits. Um, you could say also that his Pluto um, conjunct Zeus is opposition her son. Not exactly. Um, it's Pluto is also opposition her Uranus. So that son Uranus... Um, conjunction that she has a fairly wide sun uranus conjunction um but sun i suppose is a male planet it's projectable and his pluto so she gets killed by it's not just about him it's about she gets killed by him as a as a representative of his generation um a late baby boomer with a moon at 158 virgo that's the kind of person perhaps that she should have been very wary of um, and a final point about her chart um, and her transits um, is that uh, she has her Venus. So she has her Venus at 22 degrees uh, Capricorn. So Jupiter was square her Venus. So what was happening is Jupiter was bringing together uh, the main synastry between um Kaylin Gillis and uh, um, Kevin Monaghan. So Jupiter was opposition Kevin Monaghan's um, Mars, and it was square um, Kaylin Gillis's Venus. So Jupiter was just bringing in, brought that connection together at the time at the, at the time of um, the time of the shooting. Uh, I suppose, last of all, uh, I should um, look at the sentencing and see you know, what was happening at the time of the sentencing. Uh, so I don't know precisely what time it was. I don't, I've gone for 10 a.m. I don't even know where it was. I know it was in Washington County in New York. I, I've just gone for a town in Washington, um, Fort Edward, New York. It probably wasn't there, but I, I have no idea. I think that was this, this capital of it, uh, the, of the main the seat of government in the county, but it doesn't doesn't matter because I I'm not going for a, an exact time there. I just want to just briefly consider what 
what was going on, what was the main thing happening to um, Kevin Monaghan when he was sentenced to 25 years. Um, and I, I think that what what is probably the, the main thing going on is that he had his Saturn at, he has his... Uh, he has his Saturn at 12 degrees 6 um, Sagittarius. So Saturn was approaching the square of his Saturn. The sun was square, his, was moving toward, towards a square of his Saturn. Mercury was moving away from a square of his Saturn. So we had this conjunction forming um, in Pisces square his Saturn. And I would kind of see this as a Saturn square Saturn event. So he would have had his Saturn return um, just before his 60th birthday, which would have been um, around, I don't know, off the top of my head, something like 2016. Um, and so you have your Saturn return in your late 50s. And I suppose it's it's it should be a time when you accept um, <laughs> that you're no longer a young young man. Uh, something I've just been through, um, my Saturn return. Because I'm now 61, so it's actually a few years, a few years back since I had my last Saturn return. And so, when you have that Saturn square Saturn, it really is clear you are now in your late 60s um, when you have Saturn square Saturn, and that should have been how he sort of understood understood himself, what he was doing with his life, what he wanted to do with the rest of his life. That is the final point: Saturn square Saturn. That's what he should have been thinking about. But what was he doing? He was still with his shotgun and his, uh, in his, um, in his Scorpio mentality of the worst type of Scorpio mentality with his shotgun, hating hating anyone that intrudes on his space and reaching the stage when he wants to wants to kill them. Oh, when he well, we don't know what he wanted. Um, maybe cognitively you know at that age maybe he's not as not he's there's a bit of decline there becoming a bit cranky um and so that's his saturn square saturn his saturn square saturn is doing something that brings something home to him brings reality to him and uh ends up with him or probably spending the rest of his life um in prison okay so that's it. That's all I'm going to say about this uh, uh, tragic event. I mean, I suppose some might argue that I shouldn't have been talking about it at all. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm into astrology. Uh, I, I try to look at the news. Um, this is a news story, even though I don't have time charts, where I think it's worth looking at the charts because I think they are... Um, I think it's useful and they tell us, give us some idea about um, about how astrology works. So, yes. So uh, thank you for listening. I hope you weren't offended by that. Um, if you enjoyed this video, I would be grateful if you were to like it. If you're not subscribed and you enjoyed the video, I would, of course, be grateful if you were to subscribe. And if you want to buy me a coffee, there is a link in the description. Thanks again for listening. And I will talk to you again tomorrow.